Pastor Lelis Keys and First Lady Mary Keys invite you to join them in worship at Church on the Move, 1604 Congress Street in Laurel. Services are Sunday mornings at 11 and Tuesday night prayer and Bible study at 7 p.m. Please call 601-382-5161 for more information or find us on Facebook. We look forward to meeting you and worshiping the Lord together. Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. Come see why our customers say Corner Market is a special place to shop. Corner Market has everything that you would need when you come by. At their meat counter, it's always fresh and neat. The butcher's always here to help you. We're a family of four, and when you come to Corner Market, they have the pick five meats for, I believe it's 20 or $25, and that's great for a family that's on a budget, and I think pretty much all of us are nowadays. I just find that everybody here is friendly, and it's like a home town grocery store. Corner Market, a special place to shop. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us this morning on Lifting You Higher TV Ministries. I'm always excited because God is always sending me someone to come on the program who's going to be a blessing, who's going to give some hope to the people. I have with me today as my special guest, Mr. Lawrence J. Harge. He is a native of Vicksburg, Mississippi, but he's coming to us by way of Michigan and also California at this particular time. Mr. Hodge is the epitome of a man of vision. I've had a chance to talk with him. He's involved in doing a lot of community services. He is the uh, CEO of uh, and the founder of Hodge Investments, and, and, and the list just goes on and on. But if I give you too, too much information, I won't have a chance to tell him what I want him to tell you. So at this time, I'd like to introduce to you my guest for today, Mr. Lawrence J. Hodge. Thank you for being my guest today, Mr. And, Hodge. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. Now, I, I, I have so many things I want us to talk about, but I want us to start off this morning talking about the path that led you to do what you're doing. Okay. Well, uh, I'm a native of Mississippi, uh, born and raised. Uh, grew up in Vicksburg, Mississippi, a city, uh, a city that's full of history, uh, as we all know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a city where the Civil War ended. Uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, sent the Union soldiers uh, down. Uh, they fought from Tennessee all the way down and many other states, but the war ended in Vicksburg, Mississippi, my hometown. And Vicksburg, Mississippi is a, it's a city where there, it's a Bible Belt city where many believe in uh, the spirits of God. And they believe, right. Everybody has their religion and, and so that's forth. That's a good thing. And, and it's, it's a city uh, with a lot of hope. Uh, there are some things that goes on where mm -hmm. some of the people have, haven't had an opportunity to really see what's actually going on out in, in other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And all that they see is what's on television, but all around them sometimes they feel like their dreams are never going to come true. And in some cases where some of the parties that they look up to sometimes uh, they see them fall and disappoint them and they begin to wonder what's my chances of making it in life. And I'm a native of Mississippi, I'm also an inventor. And I grew up during an era where I had a father who only had a fourth grade education. And he grew up during a period of, you know, the civil rights and so forth. And he was kind of bitter. And I had made up my mind that I didn't want to live a life where I lived in the past. Because I knew that there was other parts of the country where people had visions and they didn't believe in all the things that we may have believed in in the South. And even as a young child, I just felt like living in the past would only, it would only just stall your growth. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. it's kind of like planting seeds mm -hmm. and not watering them or nourishing them. Right. So uh, a tree expands. It so does. you have, we have, I've learned we have to expand our horizons Absolutely. in order to become successful. Mm -hmm. and as you know, uh, the larger that the tree grows, the more it expands and the mm -hmm. more beautiful it is and the more beneficial that it is to everyone 
uh, related to trees in our community or whatever. That's right. how life has to be. Absolutely. We have to see a vision like an embryo. When you yes. plant that seed, mm -hmm. it becomes an embryo, mm -hmm. then it sprouts, mm -hmm. and then as it grows, the branches expand, the roots get larger, and that's the way life is. Yes, it is. And we determine our own life, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So as an inventor, I grew up in the South. I was inventing. A lot of people thought maybe, you know, I was chasing a pipe dream and so forth. But I had a vision, a spirituality vision, that God had anointed me to become an inventor. That's and one of the things I wanted to ask you. Do you feel like God anointed you to do what you're doing? Absolutely, because I think, you know, personally, I believe that God picked people uh, to do his work that who are not selfish. I think God picked people who's going to allow his light to shine to help those that are in need. And I think he, he wants people that's not, once they make it to the top, that they forget about how they got in there. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so often there's so many people make it to the top and they never just, they never want to send that elevator back down no. for anyone else to come no. up where they are. No. It's like, I'm up here, now you get up here the yeah. best way you can. That's being selfish. So my attitude was, listen, you know, we know the poor is always going to be with us. Mm -hmm. well, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. But right. just because, that, you know, that's rich and that's poor and that's mm -hmm. middle class. Mm -hmm. But we have to leave a legacy of saying, you know, when we go before our maker, we don't know what day that's going to be. And when he asks you, what did you do with your life while you were there? Who did you help? What, land, what marks did you leave on my, on my earth when I sent you down there that I can say, hey, you deserve to be in the, in the, in the heavens, you know? So I can truly say I've been there. I have, I've had experienced setbacks and disappointments. Mm -hmm. The list goes on. Yeah. But I never gave up. And that's what we have to be. Because none of us have a calendar to say, hey, look at this calendar and it says you're going to become successful at December 21st, no. December uh, Christmas Day or whatever. You know, if you look back on some of the most famous people, mm -hmm. they had many setbacks. They did. Even the, even the, the, the president of the United States, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yes. Many people don't know that he ran for election over eight times and he... He lost each and every one of those elections, mm -hmm. but he never gave up. He also had a nervous breakdown mm -hmm. during the course of this time. He was having issues with his wife, but yet he's known for doing one of the most remarkable things uh, in the history of the presidency. That's right. He signed the Emancipation of Proclamation mm -hmm. that freed the slaves. slaves. Okay. That's right. That's and right. many of us, we don't realize, and a lot of us don't even know the history of Abraham Lincoln, mm -hmm. the significance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my attitude is like this, you know, sometimes we preach the Bible, but sometimes we don't expand the, the horizon of the Bible where mm -hmm. people truly understand. Mm -hmm. See, God is about loving all. Yes. You know, yes. a lot of times we take for granted when you walk outside and you look to the skies, that was created by one of the greatest inventors of all times mm -hmm. and that's God. That's right. There's no greater inventor right. than him. That's right. He created the grass. That's right. He created the sun. He created all it, these things. The whole nine yards. And, and he even created the people who like you or don't, don't like, like you. That's so right. anything that's created by God, we should love. That's right. And just because a person believes in something different from you, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you should hate them. No. You know, just like this Bible sitting here, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The verses haven't changed. No. But you have so many different religions in this world today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're all reading the same Bible, the same verses, mm -hmm. but their interpretation of it is it's different. different. Mm -hmm. That's okay. We have a right to be who we want. We have mm -hmm. a right to have our own, make our own mm -hmm. decisions. Mm -hmm. That's what the First Amendment is for. Mm -hmm. Freedom of speech and enforce your opinion. That's right. Even if living in the South, mm -hmm. we have to understand, if there wasn't differences that we had to experience, life wouldn't be the way that it is. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That's there's right. good, there's bad, yeah. there's a difference of opinions. Mm -hmm. So my attitude is, I appreciate what took place, even though it was sad, it was hardening, what went on in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. But it gave us all a better understanding mm -hmm. to come to, at the end, to come to one accord. Mm -hmm. So even today, it's okay for people to love their history, what took place during the civil rights era. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of history. Right. I even admire. Yeah. I even study to see what was going on right. and how those things take. Mm -hmm. But that don't make me hate you because what you believe. And why penalize somebody today 
for what, what happened gran- then. And what their mm-hmm. grandparents That's believed right. in. That's you know, right. we as African Americans, mm-hmm. what a lot of people don't preach, we got some of us that dislike folks and prejudge but don't even get to know them. Right. But it's okay, just like you and I, we meet. I can prejudge you. You say you're a minister, mm-hmm. okay? An evangelist. Mm-hmm. So I immediately prejudge you. Mm-hmm. But I haven't sit down to speak with you That's to right. find out that you got a big heart, mm-hmm. that you love everybody, mm-hmm. that you care about people, mm-hmm. that you are a pillar in your community, mm-hmm. and people are looking up to you. Mm-hmm. But if I prejudge you because of my first impression mm-hmm. and I meet you mm-hmm. without even getting to know you, mm-hmm then I may have missed out on a blessed opportunity. That's right. And that's what happens in life, you mm-hmm. know? Um, I managed to meet a lot of people. And they liked me from the start because I didn't know who they were from Adam or Eve. But we became the best, the best of friends. Mm-hmm. You know, and during my journey uh, on my way to success, mm-hmm. I managed to meet a lot of famous people. Right. I became friends with some of them. Mm-hmm. You know, and in some people's mind, it's hard to them believe. Mm-hmm. But rather, you know, to let you know this encouragement, mm-hmm. I'm a native of Mississippi, and when I was, I used to live in South Central L.A. Prior to living in Beverly Hills and mm-hmm. New York, that's fine. But I experienced both sides of the fence. Right. And I could tell the young people, I lived in South Central, gang banging. Matter of fact, during the L.A. 1992 uprising, I was walking around watching this. Matter of fact, uh, the guy with Newsweek, he chose me and my buddies to take them around in the inner cities so they could take pictures of what was going on in the uprising. I will never forget that, but I was living in a garage and the legendary law officer Johnny Cochran helped me while I was inventing from my garage. That was my start. That's how I got recognized. Then I met a prominent doctor, Republican in Beverly Hills. They set me up and uh, I met a lot of famous people and I got recognized. I later got knowledge uh, McDonnell Douglas in L.A. after the 1986 Value Jet crash in the Florida Everglades. Mm -hmm. And I got recognized for my fire extinguisher. Later on in life, uh, the company that promoted OxyClean, Kaboom, Snuggles, I went on a contract with them. They aired my products on national television, like Lifetime, Hallmark, Discovery. And I managed to get recognized. And then other inventions that I had managed to be discovered. So now here we are, I've gone into retail outlets all over the country. And I'm in demand uh, doing business in Thailand, uh, Germany, London. Not just in the United States. Not just in the United States. The products are being sold. They're airing our infomercials in their own native languages in their country. Products that was invented by a country boy from Mississippi. Well, this is getting more interesting by the minute. People, I want you to stay tuned because we're going to come back and we're going to continue talking to Mr. Lawrence J. Hart. He is an inventor. We're going to talk about some of those products that he invented and where you can go on the Internet or in the store to purchase those products. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. Come see why our customers say Corner Market is a special place to shop. Corner Market has everything that you would need when you come by. Their meat counter is always fresh and neat. The butcher's always here to help you. We're a family of four, and when you come to Corner Market, they have the pick five meats for, I believe it's 20 or $25, and that's great for a family that's on a budget, and I think pretty much all of us are nowadays. I just find that everybody here is friendly, and it's like a home town grocery store. Corner Market, a special place to shop. For those of you who are just joining me for the second part of the program today, I'm talking to Mr. Lawrence J. Hart. He is an inventor. Uh, He is a CEO of investment company. He, you name it, and God is blessing him in those areas. He is from Vicksburg, Mississippi. Mr. Hart, you've given us so much pertinent information about being able to make it and not giving up, and I like that. And you talked about love. And the Bible says the first commandment is to love the Lord 
thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and spirit, and then to love your neighbor. And I believe that the reason you've gone as far as you've gone is because you've not allowed bigotry and prejudice and animosity to set in, but you've loved all mankind. Yes. Well, you know, one of my biggest dreams was when I invented some of the products that I had, I wanted to go back to my hometown. I was still living in L.A., you know, working out in New York, and I wanted to give back to my hometown. Uh, the loss of Johnny Cochran and others, they were against that because they felt that my home state wasn't ready. And they, they wouldn't accept what I was doing as being a young man because a lot of the uh, young men, you know, their vision was, just wasn't there. Yeah. You know, and the Bible speaks of that, even with Jesus Christ. You mm -hmm. know, he said a prophet can't make it in his hometown. His hometown. But yet right. when Jesus Christ left his hometown, he, he was, was able to... He was accepted. He was mm -hmm. able to be recognized That's right. globally. That's right. And he he'd taken advantage of that, and he turned yeah. around and went back mm -hmm. and started healing in his hometown. hometown. You know, right. so he experienced no more than any of us. You know, non-believers, mm -hmm. uh, parties who just hate you just because. Not mm -hmm. just a racial thing. Let's make sure this is not about race issues. Right. It's just people in general. In general. Mm -hmm. You know, that they, they feel like, hey, you're fighting a losing battle. You're climbing a mountain that you'll never make it to the top of. So, uh, but you have to believe that you can achieve. And as I stated uh, in one of our speeches that we had at the Martin Luther King Peace Walk, you know, if you believe you can, you will succeed, you will. you're probably right. Mm -hmm. But if you believe you're going to fail, you will. You, you, you will fail. Mm -hmm. So it's a mental, mm -hmm. you have to motivate yourself mm -hmm. mentally to be able to achieve and accomplish your goals. How did you stay focused? And I'm sure when you were doing a lot of these inventions, you had the naysayers saying he'll never make any money. He just, he's wasting his time. How did you stay encouraged? Well, it was very challenging because even when you have your brothers and sisters just feel like, you know, you, you almost feel like that cartoon I used to watch when I was little, <laughs> that Willie Coyote was chasing the road runner. <laughs> and no matter how many blocks fell on him, mm -hmm. a train run mm -hmm. over him, fall off a cliff. Mm -hmm. He never gave up. He never stopped. And to my understanding, I, I saw the movie maybe about three months ago on television. He's still chasing the road runner. <laughs> so he haven't given up. That's right. So we had to be like Willie Coyote in life. You keep no matter going. what happens, you fall, get smashed, you got to keep get going. Up. No matter mm -hmm. who says what, mm -hmm. you know. So that's how it was even in my family. Mm -hmm. And I was married at the time. Even my wife got discouraged. We even got a divorce. Of course, she would have a different attitude now, right now but yeah. life goes on. I'm yeah. still singing. hope God have a blessing for me, even that avenue. Mm -hmm. But he had to nourish me. And I had things that happened to me where people done some things, they deceived me, they hurt me. But I, I, I was bitter at first. Mm -hmm. But when I made up my mind to forgive them and say, hey, once you forgive them for what they've done, mm -hmm. you win. Yeah. And the best revenge is success. And you go to sleep at night. And I can sleep at night. And they mm -hmm. have to live with what they've done. With, That's okay? Right. So... My my attitude is to, to everyone is, once you make up your mind you're going to make it, I promise you, you will make it. But, you know, every day you need to be surrounded by people, if not every day, as often as possible, yeah. that's going to speak destiny into that's your right. life. That's right. And, and, you know, uh, uh, I was watching Gerald Osteen on television maybe mm -hmm. about a couple Sundays ago, and he was saying... We have to surround our people who support what we believe Absolutely. in, that support our dreams. Mm -hmm. When he was healing the young, uh, the, the, the little girl, he was bringing her back to life. Mm -hmm. He had all the naysayers to get out the he room. He put them out. You, you, you see where I'm going? Put them so out. So that's where we have to be in mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to do something positive, you're trying to help people, and mm -hmm. anyone negative, you got to move them out of your life. That's right. Surround yourself with negative people. And my, I, I will say this to anyone. Mm -hmm. If you want to be successful in life, hang around successful people. Right. If you want to be rich in life, hang around the rich. If you want to be poor, you should hang with the poor, and I promise you're going to remain that way. If you want a neg negativity all around you, hang around people that's always negative, that's got nothing good to say about anything or anybody. Is that all this in your book? Yes. Uh, by the way, we don't want to lose this time without talking about your book. And the, the, the name of your book is, tell them the name of your book. The name of the book that's coming out, which will be in Walmart, a uh, host of stores, uh, no, uh, uh, all of the major bookstores. Amazon.com. Amazon Amazon.com, but not just uh, e-books, electronics, but mm -hmm. you'll be able to go into stores and purchase it. I'll be going on a book tour sometime in March around the country, uh, signing autographs and promoting the book. But the book title is Court of Conspiracy. Mm -hmm. And when you look at this book, it's not an attack on the courts or whatever. It was just certain things that happened to people in, the, in that arena, in the courts, went along with someone uh, who was not actually who they were supposed to be. But at the end mm -hmm. of the day, it shows a young man who persevered against all odds. 
and he became a global household name. So a lot of products that you see on television, you have no idea that it's a young man from Mississippi who's behind those Let's products. Let's talk about some of those products. I like the one when I first read about you. Is it called Doggone It? Yeah, we have a product called Doggone It. If your dog runs away, alerts mm -hmm. your keychain. You can set the temperature if it gets too hot or cold. It'll alert your keychain. Let's say, for instance, winter time, mm -hmm. your dog is in the garage. You got your temperature set. If it gets below 35, mm -hmm. I would need to take my dog out of the garage. Mm -hmm. It'll alert your keychain. We have another product called a water walker leech. It has a thirst quencher, snack canister, mm -hmm. uh, poop bag. So, you know, mm -hmm. in most states the law requires that you have a poop bag and uh, clean up behind your pet. Right. Uh, we have what a, about the babies? Okay, you have a two-in-one baby car seat. It, mm -hmm. scrolls from a, uh, it, it, it converts from a scroller to, uh, I mean, from a car seat to a scroller. Did you, did you invent that? Yes, yes. I'm the actually inventor of that. Uh, we have a battery for the electric cars that's got global recognition. If you Google Harge Industry, a company that I own, you will find more information about that. I'm presently in negotiation with five different major companies right now to, uh, to consummate the sale of the battery here in March. So it's an honor to be able to see that you're in great demand from around the country and you're a country boy from Mississippi. So wow. you can be in something, but you don't have to be of it. No, God has been yes. really faithful to yes. you. Yes. What about, let's talk about the Knockout 360 a little bit more yes. and tell them where they can purchase this. Well, Knockout 360, believe it or not, <clears throat> let me just kind of explain something to you. You can repurchase Knockout again in March. Um, what I done was uh, back in January was I donated thousands of fire extinguishers to the Detroit Fire Department and they divided it to over 48 different fire departments. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Walmart and another fire protection company that donated smoke detectors uh, to the community. So what they done was they installed the smoke detectors in the people's home free of charge mm -hmm. and they give them a knockout fire extinguisher. And that made national news, Washington Times, and the list goes on. And, uh, and they, they went out on a Twitter and Facebook blast mm -hmm. And all of our products sold out. Did you bring one with you today? Uh, yes, uh, I, I did bring one. It's in the, in the car. I apologize. Okay, okay. Um, but that's pretty much... Okay. But they can go on to my website, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh They can find that product there. They right. can order it in March. They can go back in the same retailers and order it. Mm -hmm. And then also in March, you'll see it on national television again. You can order from that location as well. It just... Tons of location where they can order the product. Could okay? you give us the uh, average price of what, what we'd pay if we go on that? Well, you would actually be running specials like 19.95, and you would get one free. Okay, oh, okay. and that's really uh, an excellent cost for a product that uh, puts out a fire, leaves no residue, mm -hmm. pulls the heat from the fire, oh, of, of and uh, you can that's reuse it up phenomenal. to twelve times. Yeah, okay? that's and very it's very cool. lightweight, a 16 ounce can. So that's a, that's a great product. I'd like to get one from you before you leave. Yes, absolutely. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Oh, there are just so many things we, we could talk about today, but I want to touch on one other important issue. We have so many young guys today who don't know who they are. They are in search of their identity. They don't have purpose, and they are trying to find out how they fit in, where they belong. What would you say to those young men today? Well, I would say to them, Many of our young uh, African-American males, mainly, many of them, a lot of people don't understand, they, and they always put them down because, you know, they, well, they, well, they walk around with their pants down and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, their hats turned backwards and earrings in their ear. Now, we don't agree with that because we feel all men should carry themselves respectful, mm -hmm. re respectfully. But mm -hmm. most of all, I want to say to them, I understand, and a lot of people won't tell you, I know it's hard. You're probably angry because daddy hasn't been around. Mom raised you, so you're angry. And everybody, they only point out your faults, but they never uh, point out the good things about you. And they don't realize that that's a, a hidden talent. A lot of these young men that you see, they, want, they, they, they are kind of lost because they haven't been taught how to find a job. They haven't been taught how to be men. They haven't been taught how to repair and fix things. These are some of the criteria that is required in order to become a good husband and a good father. And if everybody just points a finger at them, put them down, and, and they beat up on and say, well, you need to come to church, that is good that you come to mm -hmm. church. But they also need to be taught how to be a man. Mm -hmm. So my, my advice to them, I was there. My father left my mother at a young age. As I mentioned to you, he was a contractor. He had a fourth grade education. And he was mad because how he was treated. And if I had listened and fell into that, 
and that and that that guttle of his mm-hmm. way of thinking, mm-hmm. I would be an angry black man. You see, you see where I'm going? So when you have young men that's been pushed in the corner like that, the result is what we see now: drug dealing, robbing, raping, and and, and burglarizing businesses. And so they have to make a decision themselves. Yes. That they are not going to be a replica of what they came out of. Correct. Because children, as you know, uh, a child has to crawl before they walk. Okay? Absolutely. And once he learns how to walk, you teach him how to walk properly. Uh, before they talk, they just, you know, you hear that wheezing and so forth. So everything has to be taught. Just like what we experience in racism. Mm-hmm. Racism is not something that someone is born with. They're, they're, racism is something that's been taught. We learn. It's a we we learn. You know, so mm-hmm. kids are recorders. Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful what we say around them mm-hmm. and what we do. Mm-hmm. And after so long, they, this is what they continue to see. That's right. This is the They outcome. emulate what they see and hear. Right. They so do. it takes young men like ourselves mm-hmm. to come down mm-hmm. and not be afraid and that's have right. the courage to mm-hmm. tell them you can make it. Mm-hmm. But they want to mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You say I can do this, yeah. but show me. Right. So you are an example of what you can come out of and become what God has for you. Yeah, it's just like we have boxing that's going on, and we yeah. right now we're negotiating a deal. We'll have one of our boxers to mm-hmm. fight on the ticket with the Mayweather fight that's coming up in May. Uh, I give back in the communities. I go to these schools. I give donations. I don't just talk about it. I get out there, yeah. and I talk to these young kids. And many of them, they come to me. They're in tears. Some of them will tell me things that they're afraid to tell their teachers or their principals. And I don't turn around and use it against them. Right. I try to give back in any yeah. way that I can. So yeah. that's my legacy. People want to see it. See it. You know? you know what? I want you, our time is almost up, but I want you, with your busy schedule, yeah. to come back to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I have no problem. And let's do a workshop with these young men yes. and let them know that they have not been forgotten about and that it's not over in their lives. The yeah. best is, is yet to come. Yeah. And I say this in five seconds. A lot of people may not realize, but don't overlook these young men yeah. because there might be another Lawrence Hart, an inventor Absolutely. in that crowd Absolutely. that can make it out in the world mm-hmm. and come back and give back to the community. That's right. Because what's going to make our community be- better is economic power. That's right. Okay. That's and in right. many of these people, these young people, they have talents, they're mm-hmm. artists, they're musicians, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. list goes on. Mm-hmm. But we, as the leaders, if we don't give them an opportunity, then their t- future of tomorrow go down is, the is, drain. Is go down the drain. That's right. That's why I'm working with an um, educational program with the young ladies to help mm-hmm. them to read. The kids must learn how to read, and we have to be there to help them. This has just been great. I wish we had more time, yes. but this is it. Until this time next week, I am Hannah Hopkins with Lifting You High, your TV minister, saying you be blessed. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate Dead Doctors Don't Lie, the new book and CD by Dr. Joel Wallach is available for the low price of $40. Place your order by calling 601-296-7693. Leave your name and phone number and someone will get back to you. Order today. We have a limited number of copies left. Yes, only $40 for both the book and the CD, which talks about such topics as salt and high blood pressure, cholesterol, arthritis, diabetes, cancer, and Alzheimer's. Order your copy today. 